on the uh, top of the feeder spur. Okay. Good. On, on the feeder spur. So yeah, looking at things like the safer handles, making sure they're not engaged, things of that nature. And it looks like we're starting to get our first helmet camera view. So this is number 20. So this should be Frank Rubio, uh, whose first task is going to be to head out um, to the actual site where we're going to be installing the iRosa today uh, and start routing some of the cables. And so he's got, uh, it's essentially two cables, uh, but they're going to be functioning as two different Y connectors. So one end of the cables is split into two pieces. One end goes into the uh, the new iRosa once it's there, the other into a connection for the existing solar array, and then those get plugged in uh, to the 4A power channel. And so by installing all these, once the iRosa is in place, we're essentially going to be integrating uh, the iRosa and the existing array uh, into the same power channel. Yep, copy. And uh, so, Frank, you're going to be looking for uh, handrail 3652 that should be uh, just nadir of the starboard seat of cart. Okay, three foot five two. And then each of the handrails on the outside have numbers. Your uh, handrail 3651 on the nadir stanchion. Copy 3651 nadir stanchion. But each of those handrails will have numbers engraved into them, so that's what they can use to help kind of find their way. And this is just looking right over the shoulder of Frank Rubio as he starts to head out to the work site to start routing some of those cables. Meanwhile, Josh Cassidy is splitting off. And for both of the uh, starboard seat of cart. And copy, you're at the starboard seat of cart. Hey, dude, just wanted to let you guys know before you head into your midday meal that Josh and Frank are about 10 minutes up on the timeline, so they may be given that call to start robotics up a little early. You guys are go for steps one and two whenever you are ready before then. Give all of our robotics calls due on space to ground three. Frank, Josh, while you guys are working on your green hooks there, I'm going to read off some warnings and cautions, so that's okay. Hey, Nick, uh, just uh, for your awareness, my green hook is down on the Inboard expansion of 3652. I'm in route to the bag. Copy, Frank. EV2 is ready for those cautions. And so there's a warning. Uh, EV1 also ready. There's a warning for the uh, uh, grapple shafts and the uh, cervical coupling teeth that, that there are no touch. And then for the FSC, it's a reminder to translate slow, less than uh, four inches per second. Uh, wait for motion to dampen out before importing yeah. loads. Uh, don't translate simultaneously, and uh, and uh, avoid contact with IROSA blankets and solar cells. You want copies? BV2 copies, thanks. And the ground IV for today, Nick Hay, reading out a couple of cautions. Um, anytime we do these spacewalks. So you've got a great, good green hook down. You're going to work on uh, bundling the cable bag and then translating outboard. Um, and Josh, 3651, you might uh, have to wait for Frank and uh, maybe be able to give him a hand getting that bundle together. Yeah, I agree. I think I will have to wait. Yep. And big picture for both of you, we're about 10 minutes up on the uh, the timing with our eclipse, so we're good just working this slow and methodical and conditioning the medox the right way. Sounds great. Okay, thanks, man. Station Houston.
EB2, TCB is now 5.5. Copy, Josh, 5.5. Josh Gasser was on another TCV call out, again, just adjusting the, especially the thermal control valve on his suit, just how cool he's making it. And the number goes between zero and 10, the higher the number, the colder it is. Space ground three today for our ground call since two is going to the Russian segment. Okay. I think, uh, I think I will have to wait to get to that 3651 if you agree. Doesn't look like uh, we want to go that, have me go past you. Okay. I can certainly help here if you need it. Okay, great. Uh, give me just one second to get this. Okay. If you want me to, I can connect this large small that's off of the M bag to the kill bag, but I don't want to mess you up. Um, yeah, if you think there's a uh, break that we can draw attention off of, or at least walk it out, maybe on the far side there. You want to walk it out? Yeah, just because I want the bags kind of tight together. I think you, so you want to retract in, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Let it retract all the way and then lock it so it doesn't come out any further. Oh, so, does that make sense? Yeah. But I think um, if you pull on it when it's locked out like that, it'll continue to let some out, not reel back in. Okay. You might not want to do that. All right, but up to you. If you want, it is connected. You let me know if you want it locked out. Thank you. Yeah, you can just leave it unlocked. You are uh, large, small from the M bag, go on to the cable bag on one of the external D rings. Yeah, it's just not going to give me enough. Uh... Switch the BRT to the cable bag? Uh, no, I just wanted to see if I could get it tighter here. I'm from flopping around so much. I could put the integral on there if you want, instead of the large small. But that all. Yeah, you can't. Are you able to put. Oh, here, I got it from here. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure I may, may just undo the football, but I'll keep it. Are you able to now um, release it? The large small? Um, the IDA bag. I'll just keep the, uh, I'll keep the large small words up. So I am ready to the uh, mic bag, and the mic bag is ready in two locations to the IDA bag. I can see it's uh, required to release it from Cedar Creek. Okay. I can confirm that it is ready. The large small is connected. You have the other one. Yep. So I'm going to release this from block or square alpha. And I'll leave it free. Unless you wanted it. Oh, if you can hook it back up, that'd be great. Just to thank you. There you go. Awesome. Josh, no problem. And 
Frank. Josh, I want to let you know that we uh, have good HECA and uh, are following along now with video as well as voice. Um, so, Frank, you got that bundled up. Good work. And uh, you're going to translate out to the work side. Uh, note in here to uh, about a fairly zenith of the port TFR as you go out. Copy that, thanks, Nick. And yeah, thanks to Josh for helping getting that bundled. Oh, no problem. Looks good. All right, picking up my local and head there. Josh, let me, uh, do you mind if I go first here? Or you, you head and Nader. I'm head and Nader. Okay. All right, with the bag handoff now complete, you know, our spacewalkers are going to go two separate directions right now for Frank Rubio. He's going to be heading over to uh, the canister, essentially the area where we're actually going to be installing uh, the new solar array. He's going to pre-route some of the cables that are going to be required uh, to essentially jumper the new solar array into the power channel itself. So he'll get those laid out and tied down uh, in advance of the array itself showing up. Meanwhile, Josh Cassida is going to move over to the FSE, the flight support equipment. It's essentially the, the cargo pallet. Uh, the outboard TFR, uh, there is a long duration that's holding the uh, brake arms in place. So it's going to keep me from being able to put my cord up and over the TFR. Yeah, copy, Frank. Uh, understand the uh, the config. Uh, idea is to separate you, uh, Zenith, and, and keep Josh and Nader. So if you can go over and around the, the whole TFR, that'll achieve the same end. Right. Yeah, that's the problem is uh, the, uh, I don't know if you can see it on the hacker here. But, uh, well, let me see if I can rotate it around here. It doesn't quite have enough slack to come off the top of the TFR, so I'm not able to go up and over. Um, yeah, copy that, Frank. Can you can you take the tether over the uh, the top of the brake handle? Sure. Yeah, Frank, if you can put it up there, it should help us keep that separation. I'll just put it up and over the width. It'll have a little bit better. Uh... Copy. Sounds like a good plan. 